Fine Fighters. Welcome back to the How To Fiberglass Series. <laughs> okay. I got a lot of emails. Uh, a whole lot of emails. Many were asking, how do I know when I'm buying a quality part or a piece of junk? How can I tell the difference between a quality piece of fiberglass and a bad pe piece of fiberglass? Some people went on to tell me they bought parts that looked great, at least they thought they looked great, and they failed in their performance or in their use. And uh, some that looked like garbage worked great. And, you know, we're pretty much questioning some of the things that I said. So that prompted me to make another video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the difference in quality. I'm going to lay up some bad fiberglass, some good fiberglass, some mediocre fiberglass. So you'll know the difference when you see it. All right. As normal. That's what you use. Pure Carnuba wax. Don't use mold release wax if you can help it. It has diesel fuel in it. Open the can, smell it. It'll stink like diesel fuel or kerosene. That makes it a cleaner wax. Any wax will do at that point. Use anything but that. But quick coat of wax. Doesn't have to be heavy. I'm going to PVA the heck out of it. This is my third time waxing this piece. Not that I'll even pull anything off of it. I'll probably just leave it on the board and throw the board in the trash when I'm done showing you how to uh, recognize bad fiberglass. So, I don't even know why I'm waxing it. I'm just going to gel coat it and show you the good from the bad so you'll know Get all the wax off of it. There we go. Looking good. All right, let's put some PVA on this bad boy. Remember, you only missed the first few coats before you lay a heavy coat on. Alright, just lay a little heavier coat on now. That's uh, three missed coats on there. This is not paint. So I don't spray it like paint. Alright, I'm going to put one last coat on. Heavier coat. So it'll be nice and shiny. Okay, now you can see that the PVA is on there. It's nice and shiny. It's a little bit like 80 grit. That's because I got a lot of dust in here, but the uh, surface of this countertop is very porous. It's not smooth. So, anyway, it's covered with PVA, and I'm going to brush on the gel coat. I don't normally brush the gel coat on, but no sense in wasting a lot of. Uh, acetone cleaning my cup gun so brush it on it is all right I'm gonna mix up a little bit of gel coat as you can see I guess you can see it okay I'm just gonna mix it by hand well, like I said before I really don't like to brush it on but the uh, gel coat side doesn't really matter in this next step 
Brushing it off. Try to keep your strokes all one way. If you have to brush it on, try to. One direction, if you can help it. And you want this one thick, at least six mils thick. Yet yeah, you need a gel coat gauge, gel coat depth gauge to find out for sure. But again, on this project, it doesn't really matter as long as it's not too thin, because we don't want it to alligator. I'd like to welcome Mr. Bruce Jenner to my videos, gold medalist. I found out that he's watching my videos. He watches all those hot rod videos on TV, the uh, hot rod TV shows like Pinks and Pastime and all that. He's into hot rods, man, and racing. And he's also a fan of how to fiberglass the original YouTube series. Isn't that cool? So Bruce Jenner's a fan. Hello, Mr. Jenner. Pretty cool. You guys a press one gel coat, you're learning something. See what I'm doing. Some of the old guys ask me, how do you get how do you brush your gel coat on so nice? I can't brush my gel coat like that. How the hell do you do that? So it made me feel good to teach the old dogs how to gel coat with a brush. That's the correct way. So Take it for what it is, man. Cool. Okay. It almost looks like I sprayed it on there, doesn't it? A little rough on the edge there, but uh, right there, but like I said, practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. So there's the gel coat. Well, what I've decided to do is show you a few things as I go along. First thing I want to say, I've seen a couple videos on YouTube and a couple professional videos where the instructor was taking his brush, filling it full of resin, and going like this. What are you, a sissy? Put stuff on the brush and put it on the fiberglass. Holy mackerel, don't be afraid of it. It's not going to bite you. My God. I bet you throw a baseball like a girl. I know girls that do better than that. And here's another thing. There's instructors, professional videos, and some uh, guys did their own videos, copied them, of what they learned on YouTube taking strips of cloth like this and cutting them in little pieces, taking a big piece, cutting them in little pieces, and doing this. Laying them down. Carefully placing each one. Dab a little glass and put resin on it. Taking another piece. Lay it down. They're taking another piece. And they're laying it down. And they're going like this, with the brush. And they're laying these little pieces in here. Like so. I do it again. I do the cover the whole thing in these little pieces. Why are you doing that? Why don't you just take one big piece and put it on? It doesn't make it any stronger. If anything, it makes it weaker. Now you have all these little seams where it can crack. I mean, come on guys, use your brain. Use your brain. 
I guess maybe that's why I'm teaching, because I feel sorry for some of you. Some of you, you shouldn't be fiberglass. You're, you know, doing this. I'm, I'm mimicking you, and you know who you are. Oh, let's just get in there just so nice. Oh, isn't that just grand? I want to smack them, okay? This is not how you do it. And they'll say, well, then you take the next ones and you lay them this way. Take a big piece. Grab the cloth. Don't be afraid of it. Put it on. Bingo! Now you spend an hour cutting your little pieces for what? To have little weak joints? Well, now you have one solid piece. And you don't do this. Put the resin on the stuff, man. Put the resin down. Golly, don't be afraid of it. It's not going to bite you. Man. Look at that. One solid piece. Now, well, excuse me. We have one solid piece. And a bunch of little pieces. Then they come in with their roller. And they hit it like this. You're doing nothing. You're wasting your time. You go like this. You can use a squeegee if you're making a surfboard. This is the kind of thing you make, a, kind of material you use to make a surfboard. Roll the air bubbles out. Get rid of them. But I try. I'm supposed to be making this bad. And they won't stop there. Mm, we got to get some resin on there. Sure, the resin's what makes it strong. Resin makes it strong. But too much resin is a bad, bad thing. Okay. There is the professional way on YouTube and a few people who don't know how to do it. You're supposed to do it like this. You wet it out, you get your cloth, you lay it in, it's soaked. Get your next piece, piece of cloth. Now, there's two ways you can do this. Let me turn this camera around. Right. Two ways you can do it. You can lay two pieces of cloth running right the same direction which makes it strong in one direction. You can go this way. Now it makes it strong in two directions. Ideally, you would go this way with it. That way it's strong in every direction. So, but this is how it's supposed to be. It, 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 just, it, it just irks me. I'm sorry, but it irks me when I see somebody fiberglass in the wrong way that they've learned from a professional and you give them a comment trying to explain to them what they're doing wrong and they give you that well what do you know how would you know I saw it on a video so it's right yeah okay well yeah we're gonna float your boat man it's your, your part your fiberglass hmm Interesting. I don't see any bubbles in my fiberglass on this piece. No, nope, not at all. Isn't that interesting? Now I'll let those dry. I'll film them. You tell me which one you think is better. Right, wrong. Right, wrong. If you buy a piece of fiberglass and it looks like that, throw it in the trash, send it back, don't use it. That's what you want. There's about 15 minutes in this little piece because I had to cut those little strips, which make the part actually weaker. I have two minutes in this part, cutting two pieces of cloth. That's it. Now we'll move on to the next part.